Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog and today you join me, I am at a location for the first time and I want to make a video about how I approach a new location when I haven't visited it before. Now I am here with some other photographers here, I have just finished doing a workshop, we had a fantastic time actually in Donegal and then we went up to the north of Ireland and Donegal was great, we got some fantastic light and North of Ireland was nice too, some moody shots, but we avoided all of the bad weather that we had in Ireland recently. And now, where we are here is in a place called Port Marnock in Dublin. And I have never been here to take photographs before, so the guys wanted to get one last shoot in, so I said, okay, let's go, let's see what we can find. And behind me here, you have this jetty, and within that jetty here, at the very end of that jetty, you've got these bars. And these bars are, once upon a time, I imagine they were bright red, there's a bit of red left in them now, but yeah, I'm going to take you through how I would approach a scene for the first time and how I would find a photo. So let's go. So right at the very end of this here, uh, you have this red structure. And what I'm doing is coming to the left hand side of the uh, jetty and using that then as well to kind of lead you out into the image. Now, as you can see here with the clouds, we've just got some dark moody clouds that are there and also some nice wave action as well now the tide is going out so what I've done is the first thing I approach is say okay how am I going to look at this scene if I go for a standard speed exposure it's okay however if I decide that I want to go for a longer exposure it completely changes the scene now for me this structure here is the main element and this line is leading up to it here and also these rocks are leading up also so by going for a longer exposure I put on my 10 stop and with my 10 stop I'm able to get 20 seconds at the moment and that really helps me then as well to be able to make sure that I can smooth out all of that water now also periodically I see some waves that are crashing as well but I might set up for that as well in a moment so I'll show you the first shot in it I've taken which is at this height and then I'll check back in again and I'll tell you what I'm going to do next now so after that photograph here one interesting thing is if you look at that structure it is below the horizon but how you can really change that and I'll do it here now is just drop you down and if I come down low what ends up happening is that that now becomes higher than the horizon, so it becomes more prominent within the scene. Now, if I do another long exposure in relation to that, then you get a completely different view, and you now see what that is, the separation from the sky. The light hasn't changed since my last shot, so that's still going to be the same, and I'm at 20 seconds, and by taking that shot, I smooth out all of the water all around here, and then I just keep that structure. So the lower you can go, the better, because what that does is it creates separation, and that item then actually breaks the horizon. So you can see it there breaking the horizon. Now, where the guys are going as well here now is directly onto the jetty. And when you go onto the jetty, you can actually then do a more of kind of a symmetrical shot. I think what I'll do is I'll do probably a long exposure as well for that. And I'll wait then as well and just see. I'll probably go for maybe my half a second exposures and then I'll also wait for a big enough wave as well. I might put on my uh, long lens, my 70 to 200, because at the moment I'm shooting with my 16 to 35 at 35. So yeah, I'll give you a look now at the lower um, composition and you'll see that that's breaking the horizon. And then we'll see what else I do after that. So I've taken you over now onto the main camera here. I just want to show you what I'm doing, I suppose, from this composition. So uh, here is the main structure, and I've got that in the center of the image, and I'm focusing on that. And I'm at uh, F11 at the moment, again, with my 10 stop. But what you have is on the left-hand side here, moving water, and then nothing on the right-hand side because it's just rocks. Now, that probably wouldn't be my ideal. I'd love to be able to have this with water 
on both sides but I can't change what's been done here but with that as well then the long exposure you get the nice movement on this side and obviously in the distance now I'll show you this shot here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the camera similar to what I did on the other one a moment ago and I'm going to drop down lower and when I drop down lower that then is going to become more prevalent against the sky and as you quite saw there a moment ago there are some nice waves that are breaking over that so I'm also going to try and see if I can try and capture and catch one of those as well as they break over the top and I'll talk you through that once I get to that so look I'll show you this image now and then straight after that I'll show you the one where I drop down and then we'll come back again and we'll see if we can freeze some wave action. Landscape photography can be a maze of jargon, buzzwords, and confusing terminology. So let's try and solve it. I want to take you on a journey reminiscent of our childhood. A was for apple, B was for ball, C was for cat, and so on. Now imagine applying that same approach to unravel the jargon of landscape photography. In the alphabet of landscape photography, A is for aperture, B is for bracketing, C is for composition, and so on. Could it be that simple? Head on over to darrenspoonley.com where you can download your copy instantly. And imagine having this wealth of knowledge at your fingertips, ready to enhance your own photography skills. So a moment ago here, as I was setting up the shot to get a big wave, just like what happened here in the background, uh, this gentleman decided to come out and go for a swim. So I got a shot of him as well as he was diving in. Hopefully it was sharp. I was on fast enough shutter speed anyway to catch a wave. Um, I'm at one four hundredth of a second at the moment. It might actually go faster than that just to freeze the water droplets, but for now with the flat light, it does seem to work. Um, I noticed as well when I dropped the camera down lower, I had to even put the camera on the um, surface here because I wasn't able to get that to break the horizon. So within that, like I said, I haven't been here before. It was an idea. I don't think it actually worked, but what I'm doing here now is just waiting for a wave to come in and break over the top of that. There are pretty big ones as well that are coming through, so that is uh, working out. And then what I'm also going to do next is I'm going to go for my preferred speed for water, which is half a second, because I've noticed that some of the water is coming in and those big waves, and then it's streaming off down the side as well. And I think that will work as well here also. So yeah, I'll give you a look at the some of the waves breaking on that anyway, and hopefully I got a shot of that man going into the water brave man to be fair but yeah I'll give you a look at those now and then we'll see if we can check back in again and try and do my half a second exposure next Next thing I've done is I've put on my long lens here and I am now at 120 mil and I'm zooming in into the main subject here and I'm waiting for a wave to come through here and then crash against it. But what I've noticed is that they're crashing mainly on this side over here, first of all, and not so much on the opposite side. So what I might end up doing here is taking a number of shots and then I'll blend two images together because I think it's a bit imbalanced um, because if the water's only on one side and there's nothing on the other side it just so happens with the way the waves are coming in i'm sure in rough conditions here would be spectacular with the waves crashing over the top of that but when you get water that's breaking behind it it actually helps then as well to add some separation into the scene so yeah i'll uh, continue to take a couple of shots here i'll give you a look at what i get uh, next and now the sky as you can see all around me here has gone extremely dark and I feel like we're going to get some rain. We had a 20% chance of rain, 
So that might actually end up being a reality here. But yeah, I'm gonna wait anyway here just to catch one of those waves. I'll give you a look at the, the shot that I have. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow the guys that I would have had on the workshop with me here who are now looking over on this direction, which is great to see that they're able to find their own compositions now as well after our fantastic few days. What a great bunch of guys, and it was really enjoyable as well being with them. So I'm delighted now to see them being able to find their own shots after what we had done. So yeah, here's this now, and then I'll see what else I find next. Right, so the rain has come in now and it's stopping play, but yeah, it was still good to be able to get a shot here. So to summarize, what would I do when I first come to a location that I don't know? Number one, I'd identify what is the star of the show. What do I want to photograph? And for me here, it's quite clear. Then what can I use as the supporting actors to be able to build up into that image? And then after that, what shutter speed am I gonna go for? What do I want to achieve? Do I want to achieve a long exposure to spoon out the water? Do I want to keep some texture in the water? Or do I want to freeze the action? It's entirely up to you what you want to do, but the first step is use your camera handheld. Don't go straight onto the tripod, walk around, look at the scene, see what's there and see what you can put together to build an image. Hopefully I've done a good job on that and hope you've enjoyed coming along on this very quick episode with me. Now, as I said, the rain has come down, so it's stopping play. So, Thank you very much as always for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, I'd really hit, appreciate if you hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. And until the next time, schlange voll.